Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss a tool that is highly cherished by speed enthusiasts, namely the turbocharger, which functions to provide more air pressure to the engine, claimed to be able to increase engine performance by up to 80% or even more. A turbocharger basically works like a piston in an engine. It creates a vacuum to draw air from the atmosphere into the engine, which allows more fuel to be processed and more power to be generated. It's true that you can still get more power without a turbocharger. You can do this by making the engine bigger, but as we all know, the bigger the engine, the bigger the moving parts inside it. This means there'll be more weight and space to think about, which will make the engine less efficient in terms of fuel consumption and engine bay space. But with a turbocharger, you can get around this problem. Turbochargers make the most of the engine's limited displacement by blowing air from the atmosphere into the engine and compressing it in the intake manifold to the specified pressure according to the settings and the maximum potential of a particular engine design. Okay, now that we understand the purpose of turbochargers, which is to increase volumetric efficiency or enhance engine capacity efficiency, let's look at how they work. The turbocharger kicks in when the engine is running or when it's idling, and during this time, the engine produces exhaust gas that pushes the turbocharger to rotate the turbine wheels. This exhaust gas bypasses the exhaust gas channel after the exhaust manifold. But that's not all. This turbine is also connected to the compressor wheels located in the compressor housing at the front. So if the turbine wheels spin, the compressor wheels will also spin. On the other hand, the spinning compressor wheels generate vacuum and suck air from the atmosphere to be blown into the intake manifold. But here's the catch. Air being blown or compressed experiences molecular friction. This causes the air molecules to expand and can't be compressed to their maximum. This goes against the turbocharger's initial function, which is to compress the air to the required density. So, to fix this, they add another component called an intercooler. This looks and works a lot like a radiator, which is used to cool things down. But here, the air is cooled. How it works is that hot air from the turbo part goes into the intercooler, where it cools down by using outside air that goes through the gaps in the middle of the intercooler. Once the air has passed through the intercooler, it's already cooled and stable, which means it's got the right oxygen content again. However, after the intercooler, we'll run into another issue. It'll happen when we release the gas pedal while the turbocharger and engine are under load. This will cause the throttle body to close suddenly. This condition will cause a sudden backflow with high pressure, which could damage the ducting and the turbocharger unit itself. To address this, we'll install a blow-off valve after the intercooler. It releases high-pressure air that the engine doesn't need into the atmosphere. This blow-off valve also makes that distinctive turbocharger sound. Next up is the ignition process. High-pressure air forced into the engine through what we call force induction is mixed with a larger amount of fuel, resulting in a much greater engine power output. With the increased power, there is also a stronger exhaust gas thrust, causing excessive boost in the engine and leading to other issues. To address this excessive boost issue, we need to add another component called the wastegate to the turbo. This device is there to bypass the exhaust gases so they don't get through the turbine wheels and go straight to the downpipe, or in some types of turbos with larger sizes, directly outside. The idea is to slow down the turbine wheel and reduce the boost generated by the turbo. Here's a quick overview of how a turbo works. I've simplified it to make it easier to understand. The engine produces exhaust gases that spin the turbine wheels connected to the compressor wheels. These compressor wheels suck in air from the atmosphere, which is then cooled through an intercooler to become high-pressure air. This compressed air enters the cylinders along with adjusted fuel, turning into power. When the exhaust gas power is greater than the demand, the wastegate opens to reduce turbine wheel speed. Finally, when we want to slow down and release gas, the throttle body closes, and the excess high-pressure air before the intake manifold and intercooler is released to the atmosphere through the blow-off valve. That's basically how a turbo system works. However, using a turbo has its drawbacks. To use it, compression ratios need adjusting to allow more fuel. For example, for gasoline engines, a compression ratio of 1 to 10 might decrease to 1 to 8 or 1 to 9. This is important because the turbo compensates for the decreased compression ratio, aiming to increase pressure back to around 1 to 10. 
Typically, compression ratios are increased beyond 1 to 10, according to the octane rating of the fuel. A turbo in the spooling process is designed to generate the required pressure at low rotations. However, a lowered compression ratio means the engine can't meet its standard compression ratio requirement to process the fuel properly, which results in an imperfect power output. This is often referred to as turbo lag. It's worth noting that the larger the turbo size, the longer the spooling process or the duration of turbo lag. However, if you don't decrease the compression ratio, the turbo spools up too fast and puts too much pressure on the engine. This can damage the engine and the turbo unit. It can also cause the fuel to expand too much before the piston reaches top dead center, which can overheat the engine. That wraps up our discussion about turbochargers in this video. As usual, if there are any other points you'd like to add, please feel free to write them in the comments section below. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss our latest videos. Your support helps this channel grow. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.